Strumming with the thumb in both classical and flamenco guitar can be a little bit tricky. A lot has to do with how much flexion you have in the wrist, the angle of your thumb to the strings, uh, your nail length, your hand position, and quite a bit more. If you've seen the introductory video that I made for the rascado techniques for both classical and flamenco guitar, you'll remember that the thumb strumming techniques can be done this way. So let's break that down and add in some exercises to make sure that you're learning and improving this technique the right way. If you remember back from the introductory video that I made on the nine rascados, you'll remember that in order to play the thumb stroke with your thumb, you need to make sure that your flexion in your wrist is correct. So that means fairly natural. So if I just leave my arm hanging on the guitar, that's about as much as my uh, wrist is gonna flex. We don't wanna flex any more than that. We wanna avoid extension, so don't extend. That's never gonna be good. And then we wanna minimize what's called ulnar deviation, so this bending laterally you know, in, uh, on your wrist, so avoid that. So you can rest your bicep on the arm or your, uh, on the uh, guitar or your forearm, whatever feels most comfortable for you. A lot of it's gonna depend on your arm length, but just make sure that you're comfortable, your shoulder is relaxed, you've got a little bit of flexion in the wrist, minimal ulnar deviation, and of course, no, no extension. So once that's the case, the first thing you wanna do, we can call this uh, exercise one, is place the thumb on the sixth string. The sixth string is six from the floor, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Place the thumb on the sixth string, we can place the M finger, the middle finger, on the first string, and that's gonna be our setup position. So the first thing we wanna do is practice what's called a rolled chord. So this is exercise one. So mute the strings for now. And what we're gonna do is let the arm and the hand fall so that you go through each string slowly and you should hear in kind of like a rolling sound. Okay, let's just do two more. Now what you wanna do with this is play with the flesh of the thumb and with the nail and anything in between. So if you remember again from the video, playing with the flesh of the thumb means that the thumb needs to be about all close to 180 degrees to the string. Playing with the nail is closer to 90. So anywhere in between can be a combination of flesh and nail, about 45 degrees is a combination. That's what I was just doing now. So you can start there, 45 degrees, roll. Now try with the flesh, so closer to 180 degrees, all right? You're gonna hear more flesh, closer to 90 degrees. It's a lot brighter sounding, okay? That's our rolled chord. Again, with 45 degree angle, uh, uh, thumb to the strings, close to 180, close to 90. You're never gonna be at 180, you're never gonna be at 90. Somewhere in there, whatever feels most comfortable. So what I would recommend is practicing five times, okay? Exercise two is gonna be a fast drum with a thumb. And in order to do this, we need to make sure that we're rotating from the forearm. This is a fast, snap kind of rotation from the form. I'm not doing this with the arm, right? It's not like a pick kind of thing. It's a fast snap turning rotation. So if you're grabbing a doorknob and turning very quickly, it's extremely important. So we're gonna do this three times, starting at the 45 degree angle position. And we're gonna go like this on one. So I'll go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, okay? Now, Flesh, close to 180. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now closer to 90 degrees, a little more nail. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One note, you will have noticed that with the thumb, there's a little more arm movement, and that's okay. A little bit is gonna be necessary to get the thumb flesh going because it's gonna be near impossible to do that. You'll get too much nail. So you wanna have a little arm going here and a little bit of rotation, okay? For exercise three, we're gonna practice strumming the chord and stopping on a particular string. Now, in order to do this, we wanna make sure to slow down the strum, lean more toward a rolling strum, and stop on either string one, two, or three. For example, I'll stop, do a rest stroke, land on the first string with a rolling strum. So that's my stop. I stopped on two, stop on three, okay? This is gonna be important when you wanna isolate particular notes, right, or maybe not play particular notes. So let's practice just stopping on the first string with a rolled chord. Again, three notes, 45 degree angle first. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. And again, you can practice that with uh, the flesh, 
or with more nail, okay? As always, make sure to practice this with variability. Don't just play it the same way with the same volume all the time. You'll get way more benefits out of this if you change your volumes while you play it. Change your tone, change your tempo, change your rhythm. You know, anything that you can do to change the way that you play this technique and this exercise is going to boost your learning and it's gonna uh, help your technique develop a lot more. And if you like this video, then you're definitely gonna wanna check out the next one in the Rascado series, which is this one here, where I break down the thumb up and the fingers down Rascado, which can be really fast, super fun to play. Also, don't forget, if you haven't seen the introductory video to all of these nine Rascados, you're gonna wanna check that one out here as well.